Hello everyone, Simon Bard here, or you can call me Sully. Well, it seems as though 2019 was a bit of a downer year for me, and one of them is the amount of movies being mostly middle of the road. Not every one of them I saw was terrible, most of them were pretty mixed. With some I don't see much to enjoy, some I do like but not to a higher level, and some I don't get the criticism to but found them to be average. But since the past year hasn't had a huge impact of movies on me, it just wasn't enough to make a top 10 list for favorite movies and least favorite movies. Which is funny considering how many I've seen. And with that said, I'll be going over a top 5 list of each, all in one video with a couple runners up in between. So, let's start this new countdown list by first going over my top 5 least favorite movies of 2019. Number 5 Us Jordan Peele's taste in horror is interesting to say the least, but where Get Out has subtle hints of racism and felt gripping from time to time, his latest film doesn't present a stronger vibe and comes off as confusing and not scary. The Wilson family takes a summer vacation to their lake house in Santa Cruz, California, but the mother, named Adelaide, feels nervous about visiting here, as years ago as a child, she encountered something that haunted her ever since. Yet as the family enjoys their time together, they soon see another family that invades the house, and they turn out to be their doppelgangers, all dressed in red, with some differences, who came by to terrorize them with scissors in hand. While the idea of a doppelganger coming to threaten you sounds scary, it's not presented well in this. With very questionable symbolism, the existence of these doppelgangers rarely explained, and having Adeline's doppelganger explain it all is hard to understand as she speaks in a very raspy voice that it couldn't get a word from her. But where the ending does have Adeline's full explanation of her first encounter told in visuals, the rest of it doesn't quite cut it. As is, it's nowhere near as being good as Get Out, nor is it any better. Number 4 Captive State Even though it's one of those alien invasion movies, it's pretty lackluster in what it's doing, to a point where I don't know who's who, what side each one is on, and what their motive is. It looks as if Chicago has been placed under law as an alien invasion happens around the city, and for 10 years the whole world is under the command of the aliens, known as legislators, and humans were made to build closed zones for these aliens, and are allowed entrance by government officials. Yet one young man, named Gabriel Drummond, is faced with going against Commander William Mulligan, who is in search of finding the rebellious resistance called Phoenix, who are planning to end the alien reign in Free Earth. And so, to summarize, I really don't know what's going on with this film. One minute the main lead goes back and forth with joining Phoenix and not, the next minute Mulligan's trying to stop Phoenix but has a connection to Drummond, Phoenix is trying to end the aliens but also harm their own government, and in the end, all the humans have the same idea, but the way the whole film is built up, paced, and executed, I don't find myself liking any character, too many to keep track of, and I don't get any of their motivations. Plus, there's some odd editing and camera choices, and the only highlight is the design of the aliens and how they attack. But if that's the only thing I can get out of this, then Captive State is a very uninteresting and boring flick. Number 3 The Prodigy This one goes on an idea that I tend to hate, and has no good resolution in it whatsoever. The idea of a child, mostly a boy, having a sense of evil and gets away with it, without any discipline and it's always tiresome and frustrating. A married couple, John and Sarah, are blessed with the birth of their son, Miles, who over time shows signs of intelligence to a genius level. But Miles soon shows displays of some violent behavior, and with the help of Dr. Arthur Jacobson, only Sarah is told that Miles is a reincarnation of a serial killer that's slowly taking over the boy's body. And as it goes on, it doesn't get any better. It's like a simplified retelling of the Omen, minus any religious, supernatural, political, and symbolic subtext. And that film isn't good either. 
I mean, with something like Brightburn, which came out a few months later and carries a similar setup, has a better advantage because it's a horror reimagining of Superman, the boy is much older and has a reason for doing evil things, and the ending submits that one day he'll get what's coming to him. But this film just makes me want the boy to get punished even more and in any way, and if someone told me that something's wrong with someone close to them, i believe it in a millisecond. The only thing that I took away from this in a good way was one jump scare, and it was so effective that I had a good laugh from it. But aside from that, this film felt painful to sit through. It's a hugely dull and tedious exploitation of an already lame idea, and it gets worse as it moves on. Number 2 The Secret Life of Pets 2 A few years ago, I did a mini-review of the first movie, and yes, there will be a full review of it soon, but bottom line, I didn't like it. Yet with the sequel, I wasn't expecting much, nor was I looking forward to it. And surprisingly, it's actually worse than the first film. The film is comprised of three separate stories that happen to be mixed in. One story focuses on Max, whose owner Katie is married and has a baby, and he gets worried about the baby's safety that when meeting a shepherd dog named Rooster during a family trip, Max learns how to control his own fears. And another story focuses on Max's neighbor Gidget, who's trying to retrieve Max's toy ball from a room home to an old lady and her hundreds of cats, thus she learns how to be a cat from Chloe to enter the room. And the last story focuses on Snowball, dressed as a superhero, to help a Sisu named Daisy rescue a white tiger from a mean circus owner. Now, I was expecting these unrelated stories to come together in the end, but they really don't. All these stories have little to no connection to them, the circus owner is a pretty forced villain, and Harrison Ford, who voiced Rooster, seems about as perfect as Danny DeVito voicing the Lorax. But he doesn't seem to bring in the same energy or charm as his other characters, and he can replace his dialogue in this film with any of his other roles and it would be fine. And with all that said, plus a few missed opportunities, this one's more dull and weak than the first one, and there's not really much to take away from it. It's a more mediocre sequel to an already mediocre film, and I don't care for it. Before I get to number one, here are a couple of runners-up for a least favorite movie of 2019. Serenity, a confusing mess of a film where the twist happens halfway through, a supposed father-son connection that's pretty jarring, and an ending that the Lego movie did a much better job of. The Dead Don't Die, a subtle zombie comedy with an all-star cast that has no idea what it's doing and isn't even funny, even when breaking the fourth wall and having crazy nonsense that goes nowhere. And now, here it is. And my number one least favorite movie of 2019 is... The Lion King. Yeah, yeah, most of you saw this coming, and I spoke about it to death ever since it came out. But I wasn't as hyped for this film like everyone else is. And ever since the first trailer, I knew something wasn't right about this film. And as it turns out, I was correct. Not only is the story, dialogue, and shots close to being identical to the original, or is pretty much similar, but the characters are very uninteresting, the songs aren't as grand or fun as the original, and the effects, while being realistic, aren't intriguing because they're going too realistic, and real animals are a lot more interesting than these. And the 2016 Jungle Book had more acting and feeling with the animal characters. Yet only a small handful of moments are decent, like the humor of Timon, Pumbaa, and Zazu, Shenzi being more intimidating, and the reorchestrated music. But that's really it. I've said my piece about this film enough, and you can look into my other reviews for more. But overall, the live-action remake of The Lion King is my number one least favorite movie of 2019. Now let's look over my next top five list of my top five favorite movies of 2019. Number 5. Promare. Okay, this isn't as mainstream as the other films, as it's only a limited release and I happen to only watch the English dub. But in all honesty, it was such a rush that it took me back to when I was a kid, and all the best ways. All over the world, some people experience a form of spontaneous combustion, in which they develop abilities to harness the fires in them, to be used as harmful powers, and to become known as the Burnish, destroying half the earth. 
Thirty years later, a firefighting mecha crew saves their home from the burnish, led by Leo Futia, and they manage to stop and arrest him. But Galophimos, the firefighter leader, starts to see that the Burnish are just people, and tries to find a way to help Leo save his kind. More soon discovering that his hero, Mayor Cray Foresight, has a special secret plan for the Burnish. Well, nothing great as parts of the third act linger on for too long, and all acts of prejudice and Cray for what he really is do go overboard, but as I let it play out, I got myself involved with something that I haven't enjoyed in years. Giant action, hilarious quotes, fun characters, and great animation. It's like a combo of Dragon Ball, Mobile Suit Gundam, and Digimon. Fun animes with tons of action, good humor, nice scenarios, and a little of social empathy. I had a nice time with this flick and was enjoying it alongside the audience I was at. It's a fun non-stop ride that I'm sure to revisit again in the future. Number 4 Toy Story 4 While I found Toy Story 3 to have a strong ending, and Toy Story 2 being my favorite of the franchise, the fourth installment made me feel like it's the final one, until I heard rumors of a fifth film, and now it's just ridiculous. But even though Mr. Potato Head's lines are previous recordings as Don Rickles passed away before the third film's release, some character motives tend to be vague, and the ending being not as strong as the third film, despite it being an occasional tear, the film's lovable characters and likable tone through most of it is what keeps me from disliking it. There is a decent amount of humor and heart, it's pretty colorful throughout, and it's simply charming as the previous Toy Story movies. Yet whether the next film is true or not, all I can say is that Toy Story 4 is delightful from beginning to end and is quite fun and wonderful. Until a full review of it where I have more to say. Number 3 Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker It's not surprising how the latest Star Wars movie got a big negative reaction from fans and sometimes critics, even to stating that the prequel trilogy wasn't as bad as they thought. But to me, every Star Wars film has its hits and misses, but the hits are more higher than I expected, and this film has them. With its good characters, story, and fun effects, I had a swell time with this film, and is better than how Last Jedi was. It's easily a good finale to what I think is an okay sequel trilogy. Sure, there's flaws and repeats like the others, but at the same time, I didn't care or even question them. I just let go its own way, even when it does moments that are unintentionally funny or not, and answers some questions that were brought up in the previous two films. And alongside other Star Wars films like Phantom Menace and Solo, that people dislike and I don't, this is one of those films that I had a fun and nice time with. And until more come out, I'll continue to watch my favorite Star Wars films, including this. Number 2 Joker It's interesting to see how DC has evolved with its movies, and out of the ones that I liked and enjoy, Joker is no different, but it does more of its gritty sense of realism and dark heavy drama than how Christopher Nolan does with the Dark Knight trilogy. With major influences from Martin Scorsese films like Taxi Driver and King of Comedy, the Oscar-winning Haunting Score, and the great and Oscar-winning performance of Joaquin Phoenix, the film presents an uncomfortable and disturbing feeling throughout, yet it all works with its good direction, great characters, and good story, as well as creating the anti-hero to be someone you don't want to be near with, but can easily identify due to his behavior, and in a strange way, I kind of felt like him. As a reimagining of the Joker character, is a simple and effective dive into the unhinged mind of one of the most famous of supervillains, and is quite amazing all around. Once again, before I get to number one, here are a couple of runners up for favorite movie of 2019. Ready or Not, a horror comedy with a fun ending and all being quite nice, about a family who plays hide and seek with a new member, and all involves hunting and sacrifice. The Lego Movie, the second part. While not as great as the original with its story and plot, it still has the same colorful animation and settings, fun characters, and some good jokes and songs that make it entertaining at best. And now, finally, here it is. And my number one favorite movie of 2019 is... Aladdin. Since The Lion King is my least favorite 2019 movie, it makes sense that Disney's other hit live-action remake would be my favorite and it's done pretty well for what it is. 
but why I put this over Joker? Well, where Joker felt great in how intriguing and deep it was, and I only watched it one time, Aladdin felt great in how entertaining and fun it was, and I watched it about six times. In some respects, this has more to it than the original, but that's another topic later down the road, and has plenty of nice changes and updates that make it more than just a straight-up remake. The characters and casting are good, the story it has is nice, the sets and costumes look wonderful, the effects are pretty good, the renditions of the songs, and a new one, are enjoyable, and of course, Will Smith as the genie is fun as always, and is more of his own thing. I have plans to talk more about this and the original back to back, but even if the original is still great, the remake is about as close as it can get. And as a whole, the live-action remake of Aladdin is my number one favorite movie of 2019. And that is it. So if you could join me, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook or Twitter, support me on Patreon, and tune in next time for a new video.